This chapter, we are going to once again learn this law block, the police burning. We will be slowly reading the portion because I am kind of sorry to sick today. So, you know, let's try it. The first block to polyspermy is transient since the membrane potential of the sea urchin egg remains positive for only about a minute. This brief potential shift is not sufficient to prevent polyspermy permanently and polyspermy can still occur if the sperm bound to the vital line envelope and not somehow removed. And the sperm removal is accomplished by the cortical granule reaction as lower Mechanical block to polyspermy that becomes active about a minute after the first successful sperm egg fusion. This reaction, also known as the slow block to polyspermy, is found in many animal species, including sea urchins and most mammals. So, directly beneath the sea urchin egg cell membrane are about 15,000 cortical granules, each about 1 mm in diameter. Upon sperm entry, these cortical granules fuse with the egg cell membrane and release their contents into the space between the cell membrane and the fibrous mat of vitelline envelope proteins. Several proteins are released by this cortical granule exocytosis. One is a trypsin like protease called the cortical granule serine protease. This enzyme cleaves the protein force that connects the vitelline envelope proteins to the cell membrane. And it clip of the pinned in receptors and any sperm attached to them. The components of the cortical granules bind to the vitellar envelope to form a fertilization envelope. This fertilization envelope is elevated from the cell membrane by glycosaminoglycans released by the cortical granules. These viscous compounds absorb water to expand the space between the cell membrane and the fertilization envelope so that the envelope moves radially away from the egg. The fertilization envelope is then stabilized by cross-linking adjacent proteins through egg-specific peroxidase enzymes soluble overperoxidase from the cortical granules and UDX1 in the former cortical granule membrane and uh, transglutaminase released from the cortical granules. This cross-linking allows the egg and early embryo to resist the shear forces of intertidal waves. So in this picture you could see sperm entry into egg jelly. Little envelope is there, cortical granules are there, and two will lie egg cell membrane, H2O fertilization envelope, and H2O2 UDX. So, this picture needs a great amount of explanation. So, this is about that picture. So, cortical granule exocytosis. Schematic diagram showing events leading to the formation of the fertilization envelope and hyaline layer. As cortical granules undergo exocytosis, they release cortical granule serine protease, which cleaves the proteins links, linking the vitelline envelope to the cell membrane. So, mucopolysaccharides released by the cortical granule form an osmotic gradient thereby causing water to enter and swell the space between the vitelline envelope and the cell membrane. Peroxidase and transglutaminases then harden the vitelline envelope now called the fertilization envelope. So, transmission electromicrograph of the cortex of an unfertilized sea urchin egg and the same region of a recently fertilized egg. The raised fertilization envelope and the points at which the cortical granules <coughs> have fused with the egg cell membrane of the egg are visible. So the fertilization envelope starts to form at the site of sperm entry and continues the expansion around the egg. This process starts about 20 seconds after sperm attachment and is complete by the end of the first minute of fertilization. As this is happening, a fourth set of cortical granule proteins including hyaline forms a coating around the egg. The egg extends elongated microvilli whose tips attached to this hyaline layer. This layer provides support for the blastomeres during cleavage. <coughs> so, 
Calcium is the initiator of the cortical granule reaction. Next, calcium is the initiator of the cortical granule reaction. So, I guess we skip to this portion. Yeah. The mechanism of cortical granule exocytosis is similar to that of the exocytosis of the acrosome and it may involve many of the same molecules. Upon fertilization, the concentration of free Ca2 plus in the egg cytoplasm increases greatly. In this high calcium environment, the cortical granule membranes fuse with the egg cell membrane, releasing their contents. Once the fusion of the cortical granule begins near the point of sperm injury, a wave of cortical granule exocytosis propagates around the cortex to the opposite side of the egg. In sea urchins and mammals, the rise in Ca2 plus concentration responsible for the cortical granule reaction is not due to an influx of calcium into the egg but rather comes from within the egg itself. Release of calcium from intracellular storage can be monitored usually during calcium activator luminescent dyes such as equirin like GFT, a protein isolated from luminescent jellyfish or fluorescent dyes such as furat. These dyes emit light when they bind free Ca2+. When the sea urchin egg is injected with dye and then fertilized, a striking wave of calcium release. So, exocytotic reactions like the cortical granule reaction and acrosome reaction are also seen in the release of insulin from pancreatic cells and in the release of neurotransmitters from synaptic terminals. So, in all cases, there is Ca2 plus mediated fusion of the secretory vesicle and the cell membrane. Indeed, the similarity of acrosomal vesicles exocytosis and synaptic vesicle exocytosis may be quite deep. Studies of acrosome reaction in sea urchins and mammals suggest that when the receptors for the sperm activating ligands bind these molecules, the resulting depolarization of the membrane opens voltage dependent. Ca2 plus channels in a manner reminiscent of synaptic transmission. So, the proteins that lock dock the cortical granules of egg to the cell membrane also appear to be homologous to those used in the axon terminal. The synaptic granules of the neurons, the acrosomal vesicle of the sperm, and the cortical granules of the egg all appear to use synaptotagmin to bind calcium and initiate fusion of the vesicle within the cell membrane. So, wave of Ca2 plus releases across the sea urchin egg during fertilization. The egg is preloaded with a dye that fluorescences when it binds Ca2 plus and a sperm fuses with the egg. A wave of calcium release is seen beginning at the site of sperm injury and propagating across the egg. The wave takes 30 seconds to transverse the egg. So, propagates across the egg mm, starting at the point of sperm injury, a band of light transverse the cell. The calcium ions do not merely diffuse across the egg from the point of sperm injury. Rather, the release of Ca2 plus starts at one end of the cell and proceeds actively to the another end, creating a wave of calcium across the egg. The, the entire release of Ca2 plus is complete within roughly 30 seconds and free Ca2 plus is re-sequestrated shortly after being released. If two sperm enter the egg cytoplasm, Ca2 plus release can be seen starting at the two separate points. The entire release of Ca2 plus is complete within roughly 30 seconds and free Ca2 plus is re-sequestered shortly after being released. If two sperm enter the cytoplasm, Ca2 plus release can be seen starting at two separate points of entry on the cell surface. Several experiments have demonstrated that Ca2 plus ions are directly responsible for propagating the cortical granule reaction and that these ions are stored within the egg itself. The drug A23187 is a calcium ionophore, a compound that allows the diffusion of ions such as Ca2 plus across lipid membranes permitting them to transverse otherwise impermeable barriers. So, placing unfertilized sea urchin eggs into seawater containing A23187 
causes the cortical granule reaction and the elevation of the fertilization envelope. So, moreover, this reaction occurs in the absence of any Ca2 plus in the surrounding water. Therefore, the A23A187 must be stimulating the release of Ca2 plus already sequestered in organelles within the egg. So, in sea urchins and vertebrates, but not snails and worms, the calcium ions are responsible for the cortical granule reaction are stored in the endoplasmic reticulum of the egg. So, in sea urchins and frogs, this reticulum Reticulum is pronounced in the cortex and surrounds the cortical granules. So, the cortical granules are themselves tethered to the cell membrane by a series of integral membrane proteins that facilitate calcium mediated exocytosis. Thus, as soon as Ca2 plus is released from the endoplasmic reticulum, the cortical granules fuse with the cell membrane above them. Once initiated, the release of calcium is self propagated. So, free, free calcium is able to release sequestrated calcium from its storage sites, yes, causing a wave of Ca2 plus release and cortical granule exocytosis. So, you could see endoplasmic reticulum surrounding cortical granules and sea urchin egg. The endoplasmic reticulum has been stained to allow, allow visualization by transmission electron microscopy. The cortical granule is seen to be surrounded by dark skinned endoplasmic reticulum, an entire egg stained with fluorescent antibodies to calcium dependent calcium release channel. The antibodies show these channels in the cortical endoplasmic reticulum. Activation of egg metabolism in C H which is I don't think needed because we are just discussing the polyspermy prevention. So next this is a case of mammals I guess. So, gamete fusion and the prevention of polysperm. In mammals, the sperm contacts the egg not at its tip as in the case of sea urchins but on the side of the sperm head. The acrosome reaction in addition to expelling the enzymatic contents of the acrosome also exposes the inner acrosomal membrane to the outside. The junction between this inner acrosomal membrane and the sperm cell membrane is called the equatorial region and this is where membrane fusion between sperm and egg begins. As in sea urchin gamete fusion, the sperm is bound to regions of the egg where actin polymerizes to extend microvilli to the sperm. Equatorial region and this is where membrane fusion between sperm and egg begins. As in sea urchin gamete fusion, the sperm is bound to regions of the egg where actin polymerizes to extend microvilli to the sperm. The mechanism of mammalian gamete fusion is still controversial. G knockout experiment suggests that mammalian gamete fusion may depend on interaction between a sperm protein and integrin associated serine and protein on the egg. Protein has been localized to the membranes of the egg microvilli in female mice with serine ion. G knockout, the infant knockout are infertile because their eggs fail to fuse with sperm. This fertility can be reversed by the micro injection of mRNA encoding either mouse or human CD9 protein. It is not known exactly how these proteins facilitate membrane fusion, but CD9 is also known to be critical for the fusion of myocytes, muscle cell precursors to form strained muscle. And on the sperm side of the mammalian fusion process, some scientists have implicated the immunoglobulin like protein Izumo, named after the Japanese dedicated to marriage. Sperm from mice carrying loss of function mutations in Izumo gene are able to bind and penetrate the zona pellucida but are not able to fuse with egg cell membrane. Human sperm also contain emuso protein and the antibodies directed against emuso prevent spermic fusion in humans as well. There are other candidates for sperm fusion proteins indeed there may be several sperm egg binding systems operating and each of them may be necessary but not sufficient to ensure proper gamete binding and fusion it is not yet known whether the emuso on the sperm and the cd9 on the egg bind one another
pro-nuclear movements during human fertilization, the microtubules have been stained green, while the DNA is dyed blue. So the arrows point to the sperm tail. The mature and fertilized oocyte complete this first meiotic division, budding of a polar body. As sperm enters the oocyte, left side microtubules condense around it. As the oocyte completes its second meiotic division at the periphery. By 15 hours after fertilization, the two pronuclei have come together and the centrosome spills to organize a bipolar microtubule array. The sperm tail is still seen as at pro-metaphase chromosomes from the sperm and egg intermix on the metaphase equator and a mitotic spindle initiates the first mitotic division. The sperm tail can still be seen. Polyspermy is a problem for developing mammal as well as in for sea urchin. In mammals, the electric fast block to polyspermy has not yet been detected and it may not even be needed given the limited number of sperm that reach the ovulated egg. So, however, a slow block to polyspermy in mammals occurs by enzymes from the cortical granules <coughs> modifying the zona pellucida proteins, released enzymes modifying the zona pellucida sperm receptor such as such that they can no longer bind sperm. So, cortical granules of mouse eggs have been bound to contain n acetyl glucosaminidase enzymes capable of leaving n acetyl glucosamine from ZP3 carbohydrate chains. n acetyl glucosamine is one of the carbohydrate groups to which sperm can bind. Miller and co workers 1992. So, I have demonstrated that when the n acetyl glucosamine residues are removed at fertilization, ZP3 will no longer serve as a substrate for the binding of other sperm. ZP2 is clipped off, clipped by another cortical granule protease and loses its ability to bind sperm as well. Thus, one more sperm is entered the egg, other sperm can no longer initiate or maintain their binding to the zona pellucida and are rapidly shed. Fusion of genetic material which is not needed because we are just learning about polyspermy.